I'm sure you've heard the news. Ancient Antarctica is like a time capsule waiting to be unlocked. And you can be a part of this journey. Beneath the ice lies a world of untold mysteries, prehistoric landscapes, ancient ecosystems, even potential signs of early human life. But here's the catch. Uncovering these secrets requires cutting-edge technology and relentless research. That's where you come in. By pledging just one dollar on Patreon or subscribing to our channel, you can support our mission to uncover the hidden past of this frozen continent. Every dollar helps us get closer to groundbreaking discoveries that could rewrite history. So, are you ready to be part of something epic? Click the link, join our community, and let's unravel the mysteries of ancient Antarctica together. Because every mystery solved brings us one step closer to understanding our own story. Subscribe now and let's make history. I'm sure everyone is familiar with the idea of submarines surfacing through the ice pack, whether it's up in the Arctic or Antarctic. I'm not exactly sure where this particular picture is from, but the reason that I brought it up is this. What we see is over here, clearly some folks have um, exited the submarine and cut a hole in the ice here and created um, some images or paths or something uh, for whatever purpose. Now, the reason this is relevant is we see it in this picture, and we also see the beginnings of it in this picture. I'm not sure. I just doesn't look like it's the same event or the same sub. So, clearly, this is something they do when they uh, exit out on the ice. They create certain areas that uh, um, probably maybe, I don't know, maybe a visual from above so that anyone passing over can easily find the sub. Anyway, the reason I show you guys this is that I found something on Google Earth, the web-based version, not Google Earth Pro, which is really weird. Um, I haven't zoomed down here so everyone can have context. This, of course, is Australia up here, and the section that we're going to be looking at is right here. It's a very jagged part of the coast, and as we zoom in, you see an area that is uh, an ice sheet. And of course, here's the mainland over here to the right. But up close, you see a whole bunch of broken up pieces of the ice. And there's a dark shadow in the middle of them. And as you zoom in closer and closer and closer, this looks like a conning tower. It really does. And it looks like we have people out on the ice here. And if you look closely, right here is one of those circular holes through the ice, like we saw here. So just a strange coincidence, nothing too overly conspiratorial, but something cool. You know, that you can actually see. Now, I don't know if this is a Russian sub or a U.S. sub or whoever's. But, uh, you know, in this picture, I don't know. It looks like a little bit of a different shape than this one here. It could just be the angle. And, of course, one thing that we can see here is how the angle of the sun can take shadows and make them much, much, much larger. I'm sure everyone's familiar with that, but... In larger structures and over longer distances it can really change the uh, picture that one would create in one's head of what the shadow was actually from and that's actually going to be relevant in some things that I have found down on Google Earth Pro or I should say down in Antarctica on Google Earth Pro um, that I'd like to share with you today but once again real quick this is the actual, this is Google Earth web-based. I'll read you the coordinates. For some reason, it's very weird to try to save the coordinates and copy-paste. So where my cursor is right here is 66 degrees, 55 minutes, 32 seconds south, 129 degrees, 14 minutes, 35 seconds east. Once again, 66 degrees, 55 minutes, 32 seconds south, 129 degrees, 14 minutes, 35 seconds east. And I'll put that down in the description as well. So, but without any further delay, 
This is called the Helmafront Range and the Princess Martha Coast. And of course, this is now Google Earth Pro. I have found one of the largest cable sections that I found anywhere. And of course, just like everywhere else, these cables run, or cables are tunnels, I'm not really sure now. Um, they are uh, either directly 0 to 180 or 90 to 270. Perfect. Every single one of them. And of course, they always correlate with these hidden, what I call hidden corner structures. And I'm going to zoom in here and show you this. Now, of course, this area opens up in high definition for some reason. We don't know. And as we zoom in, we see these little, what looks like something being hidden, but they just missed the corner part of it. And I found six, seven, seven of these right in a row. And sure enough, we'll zoom in here, right next to it, here is this odd cable tunnel structure. And this one runs for a long, long way, almost 40 miles. I'll zoom out so... Massive, massive, either tunnel or cabling structure that ends and it's and I don't necessarily think that it ends because when I look at the uh, place where the high res ends it looks like it continues and if you look really really close right here it's very very hard to see it looks like this was one of those hidden corners that they did a much better job of covering up I can't really label it but it really looks like it's there And what else is here besides that? Well, quite a bit. We, of course, see this, uh, you know, we have one side that's high res, one side that's not. And strangely enough, the side that's not high res shows what is clearly a very large reddish ruby and partially an emerald structure here. You see, and the weird part about this is that we see this, people say it's artifacts of the satellite, it's a, uh, imagery. We have somebody that in the 50s flew over this region and reported at the time visually citing things exactly like this. And we have another book from antiquity, I think the Book of Enoch, that talks about mountains of gems in a certain place. So we have three different corroborating pieces of evidence here. We have an older story from antiquity. We have somebody from the 50s saying they physically saw it. And then we have evidence of it, you know, given, you know, very limited from pictures that are clearly being, uh, uh, someone is trying to hide. Now, the reason I mentioned the shadow is this, is over here. It looks like, and like I said, they make mistakes, and sometimes they do it in time, and sometimes they're just not paying attention. Now, there are mountains over here, yes, but this is not a mountain. This is the shadow of what looks like a very, very large tower sitting on top of a mountain or some type of a structure, and if you look at it very closely... You look at the top, and it looks like it has some type of antenna arrays. And it just looks like an oversight, because the rest of this is all redacted out. And I've looked at this from all sorts of different angles, and as you can see, as you pull out like this, most people would not be looking at Google Earth Pro any closer than this. So you wouldn't even see it. You would have to be looking at a very specific area, at a very, and of course, this is 2012. And then take the time to really look at this in the context of everything around it to see how strange it is. This is clearly some type of a, uh, a base, a communications array, who knows? But they forgot to, they of course redacted out the exact location, but they didn't cover this, this this shadow that's probably be, probably being cast from a very long distance. So it's probably not nearly this big, but it's big enough to show up in a picture. 
And here we have what looks like this canyon, very tight canyon that goes in through here. And then there's what looks like an entrance here and what looks like an entrance here in the exact same region underneath. So you would have to maybe make the leap, the supposition, that whatever this shadow is over here, and I'll zoom out to maybe make this a little easier to see, might have been, and you see you can't zoom out very far if it, or it disappears, might be on top of this mountain here, or here. And that we have, in very close proximity, this formation over here, surrounded by all of these hiccup points. Because it would be a hard thing to do to scrub an entire building or complex or structure from this, in this area, it would be very, very difficult to do without it being very apparent what you're doing, without trying to obstruct an entire mountain range. I mean, you could scrub one building from New York, and I don't think that would be a problem. Someone would have to know exactly what they're looking at, but in a giant field of white snow, if there's a giant complex in a structure and you're trying to scrub it, mistakes would happen especially in historical imagery. And like I said, you have to be at, at incredibly close zoom levels and looking for something very, very specific. Now down here, and we'll leave with this, I guess, for 11 minutes, I did find evidence of a smaller cable structure, but it doesn't, uh, it's on an offline here. There's a very um, weird, directly straight, ridge in the snow here that runs between two um, redacted areas with of course these hidden corners everywhere one two three four five six seven eight nine in this region right here and then of course over here we have a structure that shows ruby and emerald and some people have said this, and they might be right, this might be hidden mining, because apparently that's prohibited down here. And if there were giant mountains of precious gems, that would give people all the incentive they needed to go do this kind of stuff. So, But that's where we're at here. Um, and this is very close to a place that we uh, started at many, many months ago. Um, we found what looked like a turret emplacement here and over here something that looked very much like a structure that was throwing a headlight some type of a vehicle hard to say but we'll look into these areas closer and Strangely enough, where this is, we see this strange uncovering of ice. And over here, what might be an entrance into something. I mean, if you look at this, I mean, I don't know how you take anything out of this picture other than that is a giant hole in the ice. And we'll measure that real quick just to give folks a perspective. 43 feet across. And this one over here is a little bit harder to discern. This might just be shadow, but that's definitely a hole in the ice. And you can see that, look, there's a, what looks like clearly a path going to it. I should probably label this. I hadn't even noticed this before. And just right around the corner, there you go. So we will leave it there, but um, strange stuff. Thank you guys so much for your support. Later on, we're going to be doing a video, um, Abby Martin, and some things that she's uncovered as well. 
down in Venezuela and a different explanation of some things that I think I could probably be doing a better job on. So thank you so much. Again, like, share, subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Would like to briefly take a moment and say thank you to everyone who has continued to join us over the Florida Maquis Patreon channel. The Holy Bible teaches us, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. If you'd like to join us over there, it's only one U.S. dollar per month at the base level, and even less than that if you sign up for an entire year, and no matter what level you choose, it's fully refundable. First 90 days, no questions asked. What's the difference between YouTube and Patreon? At Patreon, we can take the gloves off. There are no censors. We have, of course, the Patreon firewall, and then we also have Vimeo that we're partnering with, and that gives us one extra layer of protection where we can speak our minds and we can take advantage of rights that we used to enjoy in this country freely. would love to have you over there. There are hundreds of of exclusive videos never before seen here on YouTube. Please, if you have the ability, would love to have you over there. You won't regret it. God bless all of you, and thank you so much.